Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and just enhanced our little web view here by adding a loading state to it. If you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right. You can check it out, pretty useful stuff to provide feedback to the user. And in today's episode, we're gonna wrap up this little mini series where we've been dealing with Firebase here by actually writing to Firebase. Um, at the moment, all of this data here you can see behind me is stored in our real-time database and it is uh, being fetched by the application upon boot. Um, and then we you know, can navigate around very briefly here as far as this secondary screen. Um, but all of the data here is coming from uh, this little model here that we've kind of built out. So for each individual element here, uh, we have a whole bunch of attributes and one more attribute that I've added here is an is favorite boolean to all five of these elements here. Some of them are true and some of them are false. Um, and then it's basically going to show a little heart icon down here in the UI um, and then we can have the user you know, click on it to actually toggle back and forth if they favorite it. So imagine liking a post on Instagram. So let's uh, jump right into it. If you are brand new, please feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out and drop a like on the video if you're excited to learn how to write to Firebase. So here we have some documentation. I will link it in the description here. But as we can see, we can get our database reference. We can call child, uh, passing in a specific path. And then from there, we can go ahead and um, set a value. So inside of the users, there will be a user ID and then the entire user object in this example, um, which just has name and email, would be populated at the end of this uh, path here. Um, so you can write the entire object, if you will, or you can actually modify a particular field here. So that is within each user, within a specific user ID, we're modifying a username and we're setting that value to some um, you know, specific parameter here. So we can do the exact same thing here inside of our newsfeed uh, little data structure here. We can uh, basically overwrite this entire object if we wanted to just set the object, um, or we can actually just, you know, alter the single field here. And so we're gonna opt to do that route just because it's a little bit more efficient. And at the end of the day, we're only changing one piece of information. So there are a few things we need to clean up here. So let's bounce back to the code and we can get that sorted. All right, so taking a look at our repository class here, we have the newsfeed reference, uh, the database reference for newsfeed. And then inside of this, we actually go ahead uh, on data changed on the value event listener, we get our snapshot of data and we convert basically what's in Firebase to a list of newsfeed items. Um, one thing that we're going to have to do because we've modified the structure here, we've now added a boolean for is favorite. So we're going to just go ahead and simply add that in here to our data model. Go ahead and default it to false just for good measure. And one other thing that we're going to have to do here is we're actually going to have to keep the ID of each one of these items here. Now, unfortunately, inside of Firebase, we do not have a value here for ID. Take a look at the data here. Um, there's nothing in here that actually says ID. We don't really have that value, but we actually can get it from here, this being the key of each one of the items. Um, and I'm just off the top of my head going to uh, try something here um, because obviously this data snapshot.get value tries to map our information to the newsfeed item class. There is no ID, so we will have to um, copy that object that it creates and we will set the ID to the data snapshot dot key field, which is a nullable string, but in our case, it is not going to be null here. That is going to represent these keys here. Um, and that should do it, assuming that this works properly, but I think it will. Outside of this simple function here, we're also going to use this repository class to actually communicate the other way to Firebase, the uh, interaction with that particular uh, you know, heart icon um, UI element. So I've gone ahead and created a simple function here, update favorite status. We have the ID of the item that they've changed and then the new value of whatever uh, the favorite status is going to be. So we can then very easily get our newsfeed reference. We can call child at the particular ID and then we can also call uh, child again on that for is favorite and then we can call set value is favorite here. Right, so this is going to look at our reference, find the child with the ID that we pass into it, one of these guys, so let's just imagine this one. And then uh, in particular, we're going to look for the is favorite uh, path from there. 
which is going to be uh, this particular field, and then we are going to set the value here to whatever is passed into us uh, at this uh, into this function here. So we can reuse this function very easily, and we're just going to go ahead and copy this and put this inside of our um, view model here, and we're just basically going to pass along the uh, information like so. Uh, so now our view model can invoke the repository to actually do the work. Uh, when that does happen, I'm pretty sure that will trigger an update which our data change function will be invoked and it will basically go ahead and uh, fetch the, the new state of the data and then populate our live data so the UI can update accordingly. So the next thing we'll need to do here is actually just modify our UI. I've gone ahead and just put in the app compat image view here, um, set it to a certain position and whatnot, and uh, we can just go ahead uh, and make use of this UI element inside of our particular view holder down here. So now what we're going to need to do is based upon our newsfeed item, we have a drawable resource ID which is an integer that will basically just toggle between two particular items. So if the item is favorited, we will show the favorite icon. Otherwise, we will just use the regular icon. We're going to then simply, yeah, we'll set the image resource here to be the drawable resource ID. And then we will also put an on-click listener here. And basically when this is clicked, we will toggle whatever, whatever the status of is favorite is. So let's just say new status is going to be whatever the newsfeed item dot is favorite is not. And then we will have to bubble this up somewhere here. So instead of just having the on click on favorite, we'll take in a Boolean and we'll just return nothing. And so we can then invoke the on favorite changed with the new status here. We're obviously going to have an issue because the on bind function no longer has all the parameters we need. So let me just clean this up real quick. Okay, and here we are. So the on bind function has been updated, kind of named the arguments here so that it's a little bit easier to see. But we are setting our newsfeed item. We have our on click listener here. And then we have the on favorite change listener that we just added here. Um, made use of the callback week reference that we have, added a new function in to uh, that interface there on favorite status change. We do make use of uh, the information we have at our disposal right here. Um, so we are going to only require the view holder to actually pass out the new status and we can fetch the ID that the view holder is, uh, I guess, representing, so to speak. Um, and then we just bubble that up here to this particular function. And then obviously this is implemented inside of our newsfeed activity so that we have insight into some other interactions here with the holders themselves here. Um, one thing that I like to do uh, once you start in, uh, implementing a multiple different functions um, is actually just kind of set a particular region here uh, from this, this interface because sometimes if you, if you implement multiple interfaces it gets a little difficult to tell where some functions are being invoked from. Um, and so here you can kind of easily tell that these functions here are coming from a particular location. Hopefully if they're named properly, you'll be able to understand what they're doing without actually having to dive into the code. And then obviously wrapping them around the uh, region annotation will allow you to kind of collapse them like that with just with ease. So um, from here, we will actually just need to make our view model global here so that we have access to it. So let's just clean that up real quick. One thing we're going to have to change here is the initialization of this because that will not run properly with our life cycle. So now by changing it to by lazy, that means that this block of code in here will only run when uh, the first time this variable is being accessed. And um, so, you know, a, a nifty little use of the Kotlin language there. Um, and then really we are just here to call this one particular function that we created uh, here that has the ID and the new status. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Let's see what happens. Okay, everybody, we were very close. Do apologize, but um, there it seems like this was a little bit of a Kotlin meets Firebase uh, issue here. Having the is keyword in front of it, I think was making it a little bit more difficult and I would have had to uh, basically structure things slightly differently. 
uh, because of the way Firebase works and generates specific functions for your uh, you know, classes and whatnot, it didn't serialize and deserialize properly. So I've just gone ahead and modified this variable here to just be favorite in all of these um, items here. And then of course here the child path has just been converted from is favorite to favorite. Um, but then everything works as expected here. So we can see that the element one, uh, right, that's the first element, has a little heart icon. And as we can see here, the favorite field is true. If we take a look at rank number two here, meaning the second item, because that was the first one, we see favorite is false. And if we take a look at uh, the second item in the list, we do not have that heart filled in. And then as we click this particular item, you will see this field here update in real time. And as we can see there, it did move to true. That did basically hit our um, listener again to redraw the entire screen, give us the new data. And so uh, all of all the way down to the on bind function of this view holder uh, ran and we updated the UI here. We can obviously flip that back and we can kind of just toggle this pretty quickly. As you can see, I'm clicking it quite quick and it is just oscillating back and forth between true and false. Um, so this is just a straightforward simple example of how uh, you know you can go ahead and preserve the state really is what we're doing we're interacting with uh, an API to some extent if you would think about that so the first item is favorited now we've gone ahead and favorited the second item and if we go ahead and kill the application here and then open it back up it should retain the state as in the first and second were favorited so reading and writing to Firebase is pretty straightforward. In this case, we were just modifying one particular attribute, one particular field on an object, but you can write and update an entire object if you wanted to. So the sky is the limit here with the real-time Firebase uh, database. This is a solid example of how to read and write to that database. I think that will about do it here for this series, folks. So if you have been watching, um, thank you so much. I will push all this code here. You can find a link to it in the description of the video and also the playlist so you can pull this down and see it yourself. Um, but realistically here, this is, um, this is pretty good. We've basically covered everything I've wanted to here, a good demonstration of Firebase and uh, you know, molding that in with our Kotlin coroutines and even getting it with uh, MVVM and in this case here, data binding as well uh, in some cases, right? We actually didn't use data binding for this particular um, work here where we set the drawable properly, but you could very easily create a data bonding adapter to do this for you. Um, and then it would obviously just kind of be a little bit cleaner inside here. But uh, regardless, I guess this shows that you can make use of data binding where you want to and, and you don't have to stick with it the entire time. Um, so you can kind of plug and play with it as you wish. But if you made it this far in the video, if you made it this far in the series, please do drop a like, please do subscribe if you are brand new. Um, I would appreciate any and all feedback here. It's been wonderful creating this playlist this season here for you. And we will go ahead and dive into another season um, as soon as I can figure out how to record properly on my PC instead of Mac because I want to transition everything over there. And once that is up and running, we will have new content. I think we're going to take a deep dive into live data and all the power that actually exists there um, outside of just being the poster child for a good architectural pattern at the moment. So thanks guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.